Well, hi guys, it's Emma again. Welcome to part four of this little engine build. We're sort of looking at a bearing here. I've got this bit of bronze, which I don't know of the chemical makeup of it. I just bought it at bearing services, and it says half inch solid. It's a hard bronze. It's peeled bar. And I bought 300 millimeters of it for about $12 Australian, so there's nothing wrong with that, and it's a good material to use probably. So, what we're going to do is just machine one end of it to a nice fit in the hole there in the in the bed, in the engine frame, and clean the rest of it up, face the end of it, and drill it and ream it. And cut it out to about quarter inch and part it off and we're going to lock tight that in there so that we've got a nice solid smart bearing that's nearly sort of part of the frame so that sounds like the easiest and quickest way to do it when I looked at it there was lots of ways I could have done this I could have got a bigger bit and put three or three holes in it with a flange the same as the drawing says I could have probably made a, a steel shell and made a, a push-in bearing out of this. Um, I could probably put a little lip on it and a little brass cover with three holes in it to retain it to hold it in place. But Loctite's as good as anything and it looked nice and neat and it's got to be nice and square. And it's the simplest way to do it, so that's what we're going to do. Now I've got a bit of an assortment of D-bits, they're a good tool, a bit old fashioned but they really are a, a good tool, they get a hole nice and neat to size with plenty of lube and a nice slow speed and they cut nicely, they're cheap, they're, they're, you can pick them up for about a dollar each on eBay sometimes, um, at garage sales, things like that, yard sales, jumble sales, machinist tools. They're nearly given away because no one knows much what they are on their old fashioned tool. But usually they're right to size and if push comes to shove and you need to make one they are easy to make. So these are good tools. This one here is just under a quarter of an inch so it's about 6.2, 6.25 something like that. So that's probably a pretty, it's been specially made for something in a factory but probably a really good size for the crank and I've got a bit of 8mm A1 tool steel or drill rod or silver steel or whatever you want to call it um, I'm going to machine that between centres down to size to fit in the bearing and that'll make a crank so that's what we're going to do so the secret now will be to fire this up and trim the end of the the piece of bar and machine it down to fit in the bore. So with a nice sharp tool this should be very easy to get it to the right size. It's a beautiful metal to, to machine. It needs a bit more off there now. That's about one point. We look there, that's about 10, 11, 11.6, something like that. So another 1.6 mil. We're getting very close now, so...
Now that'd probably tap in there. Um, I'm just going to take the tiniest, tiniest little bit. Um, we're looking at 0.04 of a millimetre, something like that. Which will only just clean it up there. And we're going to probably say that's very, very close enough. I don't think it wants to be an interference fit. It's better off to lock tight it than distort it. Might just give that a bit of a dress up. there but it's just a fraction tight so a little bit more don't go too far You're better off to take a couple more cuts and get it the right size than you are to to take it a fraction far and have it loose and wobbly and that's probably pretty good. Now it's hardly long enough. Uh, look at that. So we might just go a little bit deeper. Just at the same setting there. I'm hoping that's enough because we've upset it now. If that just sticks out just a little bit proud there, that's a good fit, I reckon. So we might live with that. This bearing and the drawing is only 18 millimetres long, which isn't particularly long. I'm going to go with 20. I think that won't hurt. I'm going to put a, a centre drill in there next. This one's a nice, neat, sharp 4 mil drill. Not too much of a bend or anything in it, so we might do that next. Now we're going to follow that up with a 5.5 mil drill. Now if we chuck up this D bit with the flat on top, it wants a bit of light oil on it, or quite a lot of light oil on it probably. Um, and it wants to run a bit slower than this. So if we turn that, put that belt down to the slower speed, it's probably still a fraction slow, a fraction fast so we'll try that a bit of caro or a bit of diesel on this is probably as good as anything we don't want a lot of <clears throat> a lot of muck in the hole but I'm just going to use a bit of tap magic should run through there we want to keep that nice and clean you don't want the to get hot and the, the tool to melt the the brass to melt on that on the tool but that's cutting beautifully there don't block it up or you'll end up with score marks in it
and just a little bit at a time you don't want to go too deep and it will bog up and then you'll end up with it, an ugly bore it's cutting probably better than a drill nearly we're through nearly 20 millimeters there And we back that out and put it away safely, give it a clean off. And that'll be the bore. So next job I guess is to, to part this off and to, we shouldn't even have to face it if we set it up and part it off properly. So I'll change the tool over. So there we go, we sort of set up to, to part that off there. We might go a little bit faster. Just run that belt off. So that we're right. And that should be 20 millimeters long. We want something to catch it. Don't use a drill because you muck up the bore. But there's the, the other end of a drill is probably all right. So let's part it off. I'm reluctant to grip this again and squash it in the, in the chuck. Um, very reluctant. I'm going to just run that deep bit through again by hand, take the burr out, and we'll just give that a rub on the end. You don't want to give it too much and stop it being parallel just till it cleans up. Nice and flat there. It's a slightly concave, uh, convex surface. You don't want to get any, if you put that back in there, you don't want to get any filings or anything back in there. So I'm just giving that a rub up with a bearing scraper and a clean up. That should be plenty good enough for. I'm really happy with that. And that's a nice fit in there, one way anyway. It's a bit of a burr still on that end, we'll clean that out. If you haven't got a bearing scraper, just a piece of sharp tool steel is good. If you've got a big piece just to give that a bit of a clean up. Try not to put it together with too many burrs. It's a good idea. You'll end up with scores all over it. Still just a fraction tight on one end there so we're going to just clean that out a bit more. That's just using the side of a sharp tool. clean him up and that's through so that's the bearing still wants a little bit of a dress up on that corner so that's the bearing um, that might do us for tonight so that's the end of part four and it's a fairly straightforward little job touch a loctite on there and we'll be set and more soon.